So, you want to play 5D chess with multiverse time travel? You've come to the right place. First thing you need to understand is that in 5D chess, pieces move in four dimensions. Just as you move up and down in the X and Y dimensions on one board, you move up and down in time and multiverse across boards. A game of 5D chess will have a board of boards that looks like this. To understand how this works, let's look at the knight. The knight can move twice in one dimension and once in a different dimension. For example, it can move twice in Y and once in X, like this. However, with 5D chess, you have more than two options. You can move twice in X and once in multiverse, like this. When jumping across boards, you maintain your position but switch to a new board. So if my knight was at c4 and I moved it twice in x and once in multiverse, it would end up at e4 but one board above its original board. If I moved it twice in y and once in time, it would end up at c6 but one turn to the left of its original board. And if I move it twice in time and once in multiverse, it would end up at c4, same position, but on a completely different board. Now, how does this weird time traveling thing work? Firstly, you can only time travel onto boards where it is your move at that point in time. Time traveling onto that board creates a new reality and counts as your move in that new timeline. This results in you being able to only time travel to every other board causing a weird stretching effect when moving diagonally across boards, since one turn in chess is a move from white and a move from black. So when time traveling left to right, one space is two boards, while traveling up and down, one space is one board. It's important to note this so you don't get too confused. Oh, you're already too confused? Oh well, anyways, when you time travel to a board where the future has already happened, it creates a new timeline branching off of that board. This timeline adds another row to the multiverse and moves back the present marker, since the present is always at the earliest active board. You must always make a move in every timeline in the present on your turn. If it's your turn in the future, you can make moves up there if you want, but they won't have an impact until the present catches back up. If you cannot make a move in one of these timelines in the present, which is incredibly unlikely, it would be checkmate because you cannot advance the present and your opponent would win. The other more usual way to win is to checkmate your opponent's king. When multiple timelines exist, there will be multiple kings. If you checkmate any one of your opponent's kings, you win. But to checkmate a king, there has to be no move your opponent can make that will result in the king not being in check in the present. Remember, if the king is in check in the future, that doesn't matter yet. So one way to get out of check is by not taking your turn in the timeline where you are checked and moving back in time with a different piece on another timeline to move the present to the past. This makes the board where your king is in check the future and therefore is not checked mate yet because you only have to make moves in the present and you don't have to take a move there yet. This is called stalling because you need to checkmate your opponent before the present catches back up to where you're in check. The reason you can't time travel unlimitedly is because you can only have one timeline more than your opponent. Once you make too many timelines, they will not be active timelines until your opponent makes new timelines to balance them out. So you don't have many chances to do this whole time traveling out of check thing. If you can't checkmate your opponent before the present catches back up to where you're in check, you could try to maneuver a piece in this new timeline to the perfect position to jump across the multiverse at the right time to assassinate the attacking piece that is checking your king. But this gets really complicated once you start checking kings in the past. Think about it, if pieces can travel through time, what happens when a white knight can travel to a square where the black king was two turns ago? Well, that's check. It doesn't matter that it's in the past because you can time travel so you can check it. And the past cannot be changed so the king cannot move. So you either have to take the attacking piece in the present or move back in time without taking a turn in the attacker's timeline so that the present is now the future and you don't have to take a turn there and all that. You really have to play a few games to be able to wrap your mind around 5D chess, but you'll find it is an incredibly balanced and grounded game. The limitations of time travel make it very playable and involve a great deal of strategy. In your first few games, you may suddenly be checkmated without even knowing how you lost, but as time goes on, you'll be planning out the most complicated quadriagonal checkmates out there. Thank you for watching and see you in the fifth dimension, which doesn't really exist. <laughs>